as women in male-dominated career field, we also have the look, the silent connection, the silent acknowledgement, right? Across the room when you walk into a different office in Chicago or you walk into an event like this, even if you don't know somebody personally, you know with that knowing look, right, that we have a shared experience, right? We have shared experience as, as women trying to wear multiple hats in our lives. We have a shared experience as women in a male-dominated career field. And so when, when PricewaterhouseCoopers approached me, they said, hey, we want to talk a little bit about what it means you know, to be a successful woman in a male-dominated career field. And I, I do think I count as a woman in a male-dominated career field. I spent, <laughs> I spent uh, nearly 22 years um, in the United States Air Force, uh, retired as a full bird colonel, but uh, just, uh, just 11 months ago, so I'm recently retired. Uh, but I was a career fighter pilot, so I flew in three F-15E fighter squadrons, flew in combat, commanded a fighter squadron, and um, I think, I guess, one of the fun things is I was the first woman pilot with the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. Has anyone seen the Thunderbirds fly? Yeah? Cool, yeah, it's a lot of fun. We'll show a little video uh, up here before. And initially when I started speaking, I actually hadn't come up with a speech like this. I, I didn't consider what's it like to be a woman in a male-dominated career field. I know that sounds really odd, but I've had clients approach me, uh, including you all, you know, to talk about it. And if I'm being really vulnerable and honest with all of you, it's because I probably spent at least the first half of my career like trying not to be the woman fighter pilot, right? The last thing I wanted was to be described as the woman fighter pilot. The, oh, the thing that would rub me the wrong way was when they would call me, oh, here comes the woman Thunderbird pilot. Because what did I really want deep down inside, right? I wanted to be known as the fighter pilot. I wanted to be known as the excellent Thunderbird pilot. And I used to just bristle at this idea of having that kind of descriptor on the front of it. But I'm gonna tell you something. I grew up <laughs> and I matured and I experienced some things, in particular my time on the Thunderbirds, that helped me kind of understand that there's no shame in that game, right, of being a woman. And we have a right to be at the table and in that cockpit, and we should be proud of empowering each other um, and, and helping out other women along the way. And I'll tell you what happened. We'd go to these air shows, we'd fly, we'd have a great time, and at the end of the day, we'd go to the autograph line afterwards, you know, where the pilots would sign the little brochures or take selfies and pictures with everybody. And what I noticed was my line was easily 10 times longer than any of the other guy pilots, right? <laughs> And it was predominantly full of 10 to 16 year old young women. And over time, based on what they would say to me, they put me up on this pedestal. They didn't know me at all. It was the fact that I was there. I learned something very important on this tour, which was it means something to see someone who looks like you succeeding. I didn't have to say a word at all. And it means something when other young women and young men coming into your offices working for PwC to see women at the helm, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, and it's okay. And so I kind of matured in that sense, and I thought to myself, wow, being described as the first woman Thunderbird pilot is pretty darn cool. And being a successful woman fighter pilot, that's an okay description too. And I had this kind of, I guess, maturing at about age uh, 31, about 13 years ago. I, I wasted a lot of time that first half of my career trying to hide the fact that I was a woman. You know, we would line up for the air show. There were six pilots. I was the shortest by about five inches. I also had hips. They had these really custom-made tight flight suits. I don't know if you, you've seen that. <laughs> Mine's at the Smithsonian now. We went and we saw it. It's hilarious because I've had twins since then. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I'm like, I shoehorned into that. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the point of it being, obviously, that it, it's, it's okay to be a woman. And we would line up. And before the air shows, the pilot next to me, who's a dear friend, he used to sing under his breath, one of these things is not like the other, <laughs> one of these, th that actually happened. And so I've learned to actually mature into this, and I'm telling you, there's just such beauty that your company and your organization has made time to create an event like this, and that you guys have each other to network with and to share with and best practices so you can grow the number of people in this room for next year, women and men alike who want to come and understand you know, what we're talking about, right? Which is our unique experiences.